Hey, what's up? I am Christopher Sabat. Uh, I'm the tough guy uh, you hear in all of your anime. Uh, best knows the voice of Vegeta and Piccolo and again, you know, a lot of the other voices in Dragon Ball Z. I'm also Zoro in One Piece, uh, Yami in Black Clover, and of course right now, All Might from My Hero Academia. Um, as you've probably noticed, uh, conventions are back in full swing again, and they are super, super busy. Um, recently, during an appearance at Fan Expo Dallas, I passed by the Hasbro booth, and I saw a Transformer that I hadn't seen before. And when I asked about it, it I found out it has this like really interesting origin story. And that origin story is from Japan. So um, as many of you know, uh, if you've met me before, you know I love all things Japanese. Um, I grew up watching and playing with Transformers, so I decided I wanted to know more about it. And because I'm a cool guy, I thought I would share it with you. Uh, this is kind of a new thing. And um, so bear with me as I'm kind of working out the kinks myself. But I thought it might be nice to have kind of a casual conversation with the people who are responsible for this this transformer i've never seen i'm excited to be joined today uh by hasbro hasbro pulse and their next haslab project victory saber from the classic japanese anime series now let me see if i get this right fight super robot life form transformers victory victory saber i, I think that's the full name I i'll ask them in a minute but uh today we'll get into the background of the victory saber and how the stars have aligned for this latest Transformers project. And also, we're going to have a cool reveal here during this discussion, so let's stay tuned. So while they just awkwardly sit there on the screen with me, let's jump right into it. Today we have uh, joining me uh, Evan Brooks, a designer at Hasbro, and Amanda Granado, a brand writer at Hasbro. And we're going to be talking about the supreme commander of the Autobots, the leader of the Galactic Defense Force, and yes, the greatest swordsman in the universe, Victory Saber. Welcome, guys. How you doing? Doing great. That was a, that was a heck of a mouthful that you just spit out right there. Right there. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. We're so thrilled to be here. It's good to see you. Like I, I was so surprised when I saw this figure because it, I, I guess I, when I experienced Transformers as a kid, I just, I, I didn't understand things. I know this sounds terrible, but I didn't understand things like seasons or how many episodes there were. I, it, they just showed up on television on Saturdays and I watched them. Um, and so when I, when I saw this, I was confused because this is something, you know, I'd never I'd never quite seen before. And I've learned a little bit about this now. Apparently, the the figure I saw comes from an anime, which if you're not familiar with the kind of the star, like the, uh, the, the Transformers sort of trilogy, I guess there were, there's more than meets the eye here. Like explain to me kind of what's going on. Because I only thought that like Transformers was an American show. It's a blurred line, um, and Amanda and I can like tag team this because it it very much could take two people to kind of explain this. So, like essentially, like the animation studio that you're probably very familiar with, Toei, did the animation for the first two and part of the third season of the original Transformers cartoon from 1984 to 1986. They also did the movie, and then in the fourth season and parts of the third, they then switched to another studio. Um, part way through and then our partners at takara tomi at the time were just like hey we don't want to end this franchise with this three-part episode season four thing so we're not going to air that we're going to air our own thing and we're going to go back to working with toei and we're going to animate our own shows and then well that kind of makes sense right like yeah i i, I guess now i it always did i guess look like an anime to me it always did look like it was Right. It, 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 it kind of falls in line with the other kind of a popular early anime that I saw when I was a kid, but I just didn't, I guess I didn't realize that that's where it's went. And it makes sense for Japan to say, Hey guys, this is about robots. We got to, right. like, we're going to take this for ourselves. We're making our own season. So they made some, they made some changes, right? Like there was a new kind of, I guess there was a new leader of the transformers at that point. Is that how it worked? Or it's, it's a different central story character. Is that how it worked? Essentially, every season afterwards. So 
the first season that they did on their own was Transformers Headmasters, and they it was very much a continuation of the original continuity. But they were also then starting to bring in their own leaders and their own kind of factions. And then every season after that kind of expanded upon that, they would kind of wipe the slate clean and then just like, hey, here's a new leader and a new team to follow going to Transformers Victory, which then brought in Star Saber, who was the Supreme Commander of that series. Okay, so. it's all making sense now. So Star Saber is kind of the focus on what we'll be talking about today, I'm assuming. And so before we go too deep into this figure that I saw, let's kind of first discuss kind of what Hasbro Pulse's HasLab is and what is it you guys do? Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm a toy designer, uh, so I work on the product. Um, so how this works is we partner up with Takara Tomi. So for this instance right here, I worked with Yuki Hisashi, who is an unbelievably talented designer over at Takara Tomi. We work together to bring this to life. Um, and Hasbro's Pulse like crowdfunding engine is essentially that. It's We put this up there. They're usually a little bit more obscure, a little bit more higher end. Yes, as you can see. That unicorn. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't have the space for that guy. <laughs> you you clearly have a few figures. Are, yeah. are some of them behind you, some of the, the HasLab uh, products that you've done in the past? These are all masterpiece behind me, but go ahead, Amanda. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, Unicron was that, I just don't even know which way to go. Unicron <laughs> was actually our first, like, this is this is our second, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. So it's a new thing, and it's it's great, because it, it allows us to bring these dream projects to life. That's kind of what Hasbro Pulse is all about. Um, well, what HasLab is all about. Yes. Just like, like you, you might have seen it with some other brands at Hasbro as well, but it's just, it really is like, hey, guys, we just want to make sure, like, you want this, right? And then people are able to you know, crowdfund it and be like, yeah, we want it. <laughs> We're in this. And then um, we've been able to bring to life some really epic figures. Yeah. So this yeah. is a, like, this is a first sort of in a way for Transformers and Hasbro, correct? Like has, has a figure like this ever existed? Like, Cause I'd never seen one. This is a first for Hasbro. So this is obviously like a Takara Tome exclusive character. They've released a couple of him in the past, but this is kind of the first time that he's been brought into our generation six inch scale line. Uh, which is super exciting. <laughs> so I'm super thrilled to be working on it. I I remember way back when we were first discussing this project, it was like, I want to work on this. <laughs> and you were absolutely the right person. Like, no, yeah. like, absolutely. Fun fact about, um, I think it was the Boston Fan Expo, but who even knows? Like, I'm sure this was happening across, like even in um, Dallas as well. But um people were coming up to the booth and actually crying. <laughs> like, so like, yeah, no, when I, like, I wasn't there for the crying. I wasn't there for the tears. I, I heard secondhand, but um, apparently, yeah, just some people were so emotional about this that we were like finally doing something like this, finally bringing this to life. So it really does mean a lot to so many people. And like, fair enough, I, you know, I'd shed a tear for this. <laughs> I, I cried a little bit, but I mean, I cry a lot. I just, I mean, it's just sort of my thing. Um, I, it was, a, it's, it was, it was impressive though, because it was def it definitely meant something to everyone around me that was, was looking at your presentation. It really seemed to really resonate with people in a cool way. I just thought it was cool that it came like that. It finally, it came from an anime. So can you explain a little bit about like this character? Like, let's talk about Star Saber. He's he's from the anime, and like, how did how how does he sort of fit into that universe? What's what's he about? Yeah, well, so I mean, we've already kind of listed the thing, like Supreme Commander of the Autobots, like leader of the Galactic Defense Force, stuff like that. That's what his resume would say if he was applying for a job. <laughs> um, but like, he's just, he's so much more than that too. Like similar to, not to bring Optimus Prime into this, but similar to like why a character like Optimus Prime really resonated with fans was just like, you know, that sense of justice and and um, Star Saber really has that. Like he's he's just all about justice and, and a defender of peace and just really like, and he loves humans so much so that he actually adopted one yes. um, little Jan. Like, so, and it's actually amazing to see 
that dynamic he refers to him himself as his foster father and like he just has this really great caring relationship which of course is kind of interesting with like a robot and a human um but yeah he really is just stuff, like a character to look up to a character that's like noble and does the right thing and um yeah it's really no wonder that he means so much to people He's just like very, this beacon yeah. he's like so he's guess, over the top good guy i guess i didn't think about this i've seen this figure for myself i think maybe we should show other people what this figure actually looks like so like let's pop up Sorry. a picture of the, the the victory saber that i saw so that other people can kind of enjoy like what this is so like and maybe you can kind of explain a little bit that this is the image that uh this is the image you, I saw on the, the HasLab site as well. So I'm pulling up this image now. It's going to be uh, the, currently in its in its current iteration. It has like a. Um, it's we've only seen kind of black and white images up to this point, but it should we should be able to see something else. Hold on one second. Yeah. Let's try. Oh, there we go. Check this out. It's I don't know if anyone can see this. So this is incredible. So who, now there are different, like, explain kind of what we're looking at here, because there are different sort of iterations of what this, of what this looks like, right? There's, uh, there's this guy, and then this, and then this, <laughs> and then this, and then Brain. this, yeah. and we're going to hey, play this again, because I'm going to have to have you explain this as this goes along so that people can actually kind of see what the heck this, like what makes this up. Cause it's my understanding in my research that this is not just a, a one entity. It is multiple entities that become this uh, figure. He's essentially those Russian doll toys that you <laughs> see all the time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, those nesting dolls, I guess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's like, that's the best way I've ever heard it described but I've also never heard it described that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so essentially this character is a brain master, which was a unique gimmick for Transformers victory. Uh, we have done headmasters in the past where a tiny figure becomes the entire head of a character. In this instance, the brain master is a very small figure. It's probably about one of the smallest ones we've ever done. One inch tall goes inside the chest of Saber, and then it becomes the face of the character. Uh, and then Saber is the single individual jet. And then Saber, then there he is. There's up. a little guy. Yep, that's the brain master. And then that's Saber. That's Saber. Saber then folds up. He can turn into his individual jet, but then he can combine with the V Star to form Star Saber, who's the bigger version. And that's basically like, I am the supreme commander in this state. So, <laughs> this is... <laughs> Battle up. Yep. And then who's the puppy again? <laughs> so that is that is Victory Leo, uh, who is He's another character <laughs> that has a crazy backstory from that show. Yes, so that's a fun one. Um, yeah. So yeah, he actually wasn't always Victory Leo. Um, I won't go too far back, like to Master Force, but I will go as far back as like as Victory. But um, so he was actually um, this other character first. <laughs> So he was Jinrai, which was um, sort of, he's another commander of a, of a different army and he sort of like BFFs with Star Saber. Um, they were pretty close. And after this pretty brutal battle, he um, was sort of like, he was pretty much near death. He wasn't like quite dead, but he opted to um, basically be reborn as Victory Leo so that he could unite with Star Saber and um, kind of be like this power up. So then together they are Victory Saber, um, this like super powered up form. Okay, so this is such a Japanese way of handling things, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, character comes so, back and gets reborn and you yeah. Know, yeah. It's actually let me happen. see if I can, so let me see if I got this right. Did I get, do I come close? So Star Saber converts from a jet to two jets, then be, then one jet becomes the body of a robot and another robot becomes the head of that one. And then that yes. one converts into the body of a bigger robot, which combines into another robot to become victory saber. Is it, is, am I close? Yeah, How a little out of order, but yeah, that, I think. Yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> okay. That was actually really hard to follow. Up with. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, well, it was hard to, it was hard to process in my brain. I'm very, I'm lucky. I even uh, like parsed it together. So yeah. I it's guess a, lot, a lot's going on. 
we'll get a flow chart out next time and we'll yeah, yeah. oh that would actually be really great we should uh we should make that yeah. so let's talk about kind of um i guess let's talk about where where we are. So that's the product that people are seeing right now. That's what people can uh, fund at this point. Uh, but let's find out kind of where we're at. Like, so tell us about the, tell us about the, the project and what you're looking for and the kind of the backers that you're looking for, for this project. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're certainly. looking for 11,000 backers um, in order to bring this to life. So please everyone <laughs> head over to House from Falls. Um, and become a backer now. Yeah, um, I think, do we know where, Evan, do we know where we are at this moment? Last time I checked, we had made it to 75%. So we were at 7,500 and I think we're, might, right. we're like a little bit beyond that at this point. So we're doing great, but more- Hoping to me, have yeah. over 9,000 by the end of this stream. Hey. Right? That works. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Uh, so they and as you get more backers, I guess similar to the crowdfunding kind of model, you have different uh, different tiers, right? And each each tier comes with like additional accessories and stuff that are added to the product. Can you tell us kind of more about uh, what those tiers look like? Certainly, we've revealed two tiers at this point. We're going to keep the third one hidden for a little bit longer until we get a few more backers. Uh, but our first tier is the V Lock Cannon, or the V Rifle. Uh, there's some controversy there as to which name is correct, but it's a big old cannon. Um, it's a giant weapon that's used by Victory Saber and Victory Leo. It's really cool. It also comes with some blast effects. We then have our second tier unlock, which we just dropped images for, which is the flight stand. So this is to help display him in his vehicle mode. You can also use it in robot mode. It's really cool. It will help really make him look nice on your shelf or wherever you try to display him. Now the cannon was that in one of the images, the kind of the gray images that we were showing a second ago, like the gray renders. Did that have that cannon in it, like no, one of these? I don't think it did. Um, okay, because these love... has lab images. So. so you can see that on the website, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Cool. Um, oh, and we are currently at eight thousand three hundred and twenty-nine backers. Look at this. Yeah. We're yeah. growing, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like we're, we're really doing close. well. It's like yeah. over nine thousand. <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get if there. If we get there, by, like, I'll be able to scream over 9,000 if we get there during this stream. That'll be awesome. Yeah, so no, the, if you want to see that, everyone watching, we have yes. to get there. So yes. please, check this project. In, in order to get to the tiers, obviously, our first tier is unlocked at 14,000 backers. Our second tier is unlocked at 17. And then we're going to be unlocking the third tier, which more information coming soon, at 20,000. So. Wow. The, thir the third tier, I, I'm... Can you hint? Uh, you have any hints as to what that might be? Are you allowed to tell me? Like, blink twice <laughs> if, if it's full size, if it's human sized. Like, like, okay. Oh, you blinked. Okay, there you go. That might have just I, been I'm a natural reaction. But... Uh, I know, that that was just your shock. Like, moistening your your eyes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so, like, so we have like one has the first tier been unlocked yet? Have we gotten there yet? No, not yet. Uh, we will unlock the first tier at 14,000 backers. So, well, well maybe maybe the reason why you haven't like cracked that first tier is because, you know, uh, not enough people know about it. And I, that's why I was really excited to kind of like share this experience with my fans today because I I'm sure there are a lot of Transformers uh, fans in the anime universe because it's all it's all sort of combined and the people Evan and that I were are the age were <laughs> yeah, yeah well when they first said hey you want to do a podcast with Chris Sabat it was just like huh <laughs> like, yeah. just like jaw on the floor yes yeah. uh, that's well like, that's funny because it was the same thing on my end because I was like the, the the you agreed to do this with me and I'm like oh hell yes I get to meet people who make these toys like so you <laughs> Like Evan, I'm curious. Like, so you work with, um, like, you work with other toy designers in Japan to create these. Like, what's that process? Yes. Uh, so Transformers is very unique in the fact that it's a partnership with Takara Tomy, uh, just because the inception of the Transformers brand has a very unique history of essentially being an amalgamation of different Japanese giant robots that were brought together and then rebranded as Transformers, and then throughout our kind of life cycle and things like that, we've gone through and we just built this partnership where we work together to then design and bring forth new transformers and new designs. And it's it's a dream team because they are 
incredible fans of the products that they work on. Um, like we're emailing each other back and forth, like at all times of the day, trying to get this going. I'm Everybody, on these emails. I see them. Yes. All hours. <laughs> um, we're all humongous fans and it's just, it's, it is fun and also can be stressful, of course, as any job is. But at the end of the day, it's always like, I'm working on Transformers again. It still doesn't feel real, even though it's been a couple years at this point. So I feel you there. I, you, yeah. you probably work the same hours I do where you, in order to get answers from your, your partners in Japan, you have to kind of keep fairly late hours. Like, er, like yes. everything is a scramble at the end of the day if your, your job is anything like mine. It, it is, it is. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I'm curious, like, is how much back in, like, how much control do you have over the, uh, the final product and how much, do, like, I know that Japanese designers tend to be very, very, like, like emotionally invested in the, the toys and, and things that they make. Mm -hmm. Is there sometimes a little struggle, like trying to kind of get exactly what you want is how does that work? There's some give and take. There always is with any partnership. Um, but more often than... Essentially how I put it is there are characters they are very passionate about to the point where they are like, I want to do this character like this. And then you kind of have to sit back and be like, okay, that's perfectly fine. It's great. And then there are times when I'm like, I want to do this character like this. And they're like, yeah, okay. So again, a lot of give and take. So a lot of back and forth between our partnership. When you're working with masters like that, sometimes it's just... It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, I'm working with like people who have also worked on the original Generation 1 toys. And it's like, who am I? Why am I here? Like, <laughs> so it's it's one of those situations. So. so I guess today is a special day for us too, because you have, uh, you've told me that today you have something you would like to reveal to people is that what's that's going to happen do you want to do this now should we show people something uh yeah i think now is great uh, so tell us what we're about to look at here we are happy to finally show off are the first colored renders of victory saber all right let's see it in three two yes. one yes boom yes so oh Tell us what we're looking at. Well, so, okay. So what we're looking at here, we're using the 3D CAD, obviously, but these are our first pass renders of Victory Saber and Saber. I'm going to run very clack, very fast through this. Now we're at Victory Saber. So this is essentially what the deco is going to look like as we move forward. We're kind of working on the physical model at the moment, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we gave our fans a first look at what the 3D model looks like. Now, that's, I noticed that they're on, some of them are on a stand. Is that the stand that you were referring to earlier? Yep. So that's the tier two stand that will be unlocked at 17,000 backers. So, and then also in this, you can see the V-Lock Cannon, which is the first tier unlock at 14,000. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, there's also these cool little, like, <laughs> let's check out what they look at. Yes. Looking in three dimensions. Yep, yep. So the only comment I'm going to stay on this is that um, some of this CAD is a little old, so there are little improvements that we have added into the physical model and some things like that. So if fans are really looking in there and being like, well, wait, what about that? It's like, they yeah. will. Yeah. <laughs> some of this is still a little bit in progress, but we'll keep you updated. So. I'm going to look at those stills one more time. It's like, it's so <laughs> beautiful to like this, that color palette is just mm -hmm. so transformers to me. Like that well, is exactly yeah. that's the, that's the super robot, man. It's red, white, and blue. <laughs> like, yeah. So you hit those big colors and it really pops. What's funny is that those are also all might's colors. Yep. So uh, <laughs> coincidence. Yep. I'm just going to call this the, the all might transformer, like or the vi victory all might. You know what? It's about the same personality. That's fine. So <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you in, think you think it is in <laughs> anticipation of this. I actually watched some, I, I watched some animation from the original series, and I was, I, I was surprised. It brought back a lot of memories of watching Transformers as a kid. But it was cool to hear their voices in Japanese. I'm not sure if it. Uh, I didn't see an English dub of it. I'm not sure if it's ever been dubbed in English, but the <laughs> one I saw. Was, so. Oh gosh, those there could is, be dicey. There's an infamous, there's an infamous dub of the the Japanese seasons um, that isn't great. 
Um, and that's not like official, right? Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was. Well, kind well, of. Sometimes, like, <laughs> so. sometimes there are sanctioned dubs of of shows that were done in like the. I, I know there was a Malaysian dub of Dragon Ball that was officially sanctioned too. That is right. Really fr- funny to watch if you can find it anywhere. It's, it's they're, they just mm-hmm. hit differently. Like it's like yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, no, and it, it's interesting because I know Evan and I were talking about this before we even came on. Just like for the most part, we've like we've read the, the way that you pronounce all of these names, and so we're like, oh no, the, the fans are going to be at us. Like, oh, like I can't yeah. believe you pronounced it this way or that way. Um, right. But yeah, no, like that's another thing too that we're so glad that we're here because it's it's such a great series that people should check out if they love anime and they might have they might have missed it like the first time around but it really is like i mean sometimes when things don't have dubs like that can be a barrier to entry but um honestly there's not that much dialogue <laughs> so like i highly <laughs> recommend just like um yeah there's a lot of action so i mean fantastic that, animation yeah. yeah the animation is beautiful and and another thing too that's like what i think is so special about victory is the like the sword battles like that to me like because so like very traditional transformers blaster battles and of course like blaster battles are are just yeah they're amazing they're great they're so transformers but there's something just so great about seeing these giant robots fighting with swords and other melee weapons it's just it adds a whole nother level and they're they're typically like in space and like having these like space sword fights and it's just it's a great combination, and it's a good time. Yep, everybody's it's got super a epic, yeah. Everybody's got a sword. Everybody's got something. Yeah. So, well, guys, this is awesome. Like, I I know you all are are super busy. You know, making awesome toys and stuff like that. So, I, I, we can probably wrap this up soon. I I know that in order to make this figure a reality, you need how many backers by October tenth? We need eleven thousand backers by October tenth. And do we have over 9,000 backers yet? I mean, we've only been on, you know, we've only been talking for like 20 minutes or so, but I, we've got to check. We've got to see. I don't know. Has anyone, have you been looking online as we're going? Like I, I'm going to check. I can't out. tell. <laughs> oh, 8,332. Okay. 8, we're not quite there. Come on, guys. Oh, we're, we're moving up. We're moving. We're getting there. Uh, so I, I guess let's go ahead and 